what's up guys a little more news in counter side um the first thing um i want to talk about is the arcade mode i will only quickly mention it because uh global is not getting the arcade mode only korean server is um i'm not sure if they're planning on adding it to the global after uh, or not but for the time being they want to just test it on korean server first and probably just see the people reception if they like it or, or not and if it's even worth uh putting into the game from what i remember the arcade mode was supposed to be like no gear so you can use any units um i think it ignores levels it ignores the uh, or like has a set level rather on those units ignores gear and then uh, also ignores the imprints so it, it's supposed to be like even field for everyone um but to me uh, again like I, I feel like a lot of people that don't want to play pvps because they don't like pvp not because they don't have gear or units um and people that do enjoy pvp will be playing normal regular um pvp because well you you've been getting the dupes you've been uh, getting the gear you've been getting the 110 on your units your ship um you've been collecting and upgrading all of that to then be able to use it in pvp so uh, the mode makes it pointless right uh it like negates all your progress you and work you've put into your uh units and gear and stuff so uh, not sure what this arcade mode like for whom it specifically is um i don't think pvp is that popular in the game anyway so um there will be probably some people that will enjoy it but i feel like it, it will be a minority of minority uh in the game already and yeah i just don't really see it panning out well uh i don't think it will be that popular on to the next thing is the new task force plan so we're getting new set of missions this time for um other in-game systems that were not covered by the other uh missions so as an example the talking about ship developments or raid equipment crafting so we can expect some missions that are not related to stuff we've already had on missions and other than that it's good for new players right they will hopefully it will be helpful for them but also it's good for us veteran players because we're getting new set of missions with rewards alongside it so no one is complaining now, on to the next thing, the status effect display, they talked about it before, uh, they want to add a mark to the um, specific effects that are not considered buff or debuffs to differentiate them from regular buffs and debuffs. So if you'll see this marker, uh, that means it's a special case, right? Um, now, they also changed the wording of immune, remove, cancel, etc. to nullification, to basically uh, unify it, right, the wording. And nullification will not work on those special effects with that markup, okay? So, as an example here, they're talking about confusion. Confusion does not have that mark because Confusion is a regular debuff. Um, so, Confusion will not be applied if you have Nullification st uh, status on you. However, if you're already in the Confusion state, the Nullification state will not dispel it. Okay? Because Nullification prevents you from getting debuff, not cleanse you after you got debuffed. So... This is the example they gave. Um, there will be some other special effects with that mark on. And those will not be able to uh, be nullified or prevented. Because they're not regular buffs or debuffs. So that's what you have to take away from it. 
Uh, okay, so another thing they're talking about is that the buffs and debuffs uh, overall are pretty complex, so they're planning on updating the guide for them uh, and just giving better information on them in-game, so uh, we'll see what they do. Um, also on April 26, the automatic uh, organization rule will be changed. So now units will be placed in... Uh, Instead of placed in order of combat power, uh, they will also take into consideration the unit class. So if it's a ranger, uh, sniper and so on, and the deployment cost, uh, which is interesting because I wonder how it will work. If it will be a benefit or not benefit uh, for players. Um, the class one, I'm assuming it will check if the enemies, for example... Um, if there's a lot of defenders on the on the mission, then it will prioritize getting rangers. I think that's good. What I'm afraid of is the uh, cost, the deployment cost of the units, because will it prioritize the low cost and high combat power? Because if so, then, you know, a lot of units that are two star, or sorry, not two star, um, that are like, you know, two cost will be put in, even though they're not usually strong at all. So I'm, I'm very curious how it will work exactly. Um, another thing they changed for Eugene's exclusive gear, they changed uh, the effectiveness uh, to attack speed option after rearming it. I, I'm assuming, yeah, right, this, this because I think her special equipment had cooldown reduction and now instead it will have attack speed. Um, whatever, I don't, I don't know if many people even use her exclusive equipment or use her for that matter. Um, on to the next thing. Um, oh yeah, they're balancing the sound. So there's not... Like, the sounds are not too loud. Like, for example, music over dialogue, that kind of stuff. Um, and on May 20... On May 2023, the expansion of existing content and gameplay is in progress. So, we can expect more content and gameplay uh, updates in May. Uh, which, we'll see. We'll see what they, what they will add exactly. Uh, okay, another thing they talked about and they're adding is the Tyrant Gigas, the new co-op boss. Uh, with that, they're also uh, replacing the four arenas. So the arenas you do to get the buffs, they will be changing them. They don't specify how they will change them. They just said that the of the existing arenas, four of them will be replaced. Now, if I'm not mistaken, let me double check. We have four arenas, right? Yeah, we have four arenas right now. Um, unless they mean from all arenas that can be open, four of them will be replaced by four new ones. Um, we'll see exactly what what they're bringing to the table with that change because I'm not. They don't specify, so we'll see. Uh, also. To aid, uh, to aid us, we uh, will have a consortium notice that will now appear on the cop battle UI, uh, and we also have will have practice mode to the cop boss, which I wanted from for a very very long time now. Um, it was very annoying that you couldn't practice your team and you had to go in blind and waste your attacks uh, figuring out the team. And because you you can only get two attacks per week, if you didn't nail your team immediately, or if you're trying to optimize, it could take a few weeks worth of you know tries to uh, to finally set on specific team uh, for the boss. So uh, very good change. Now uh, something I'm dreading a little bit: the dive coordinate expansion. So they are adding new. Uh, 
dive to the game. I... I'm gonna assume a lot of people will not be happy about it because uh, there's a lot of like negativity with dive uh, since the uh, origin update now I think it probably calmed down there have been a lot of fixes and well I say fixes but mostly they're just they just brought the stuff that we already had so they almost uh, almost like returned it to its original form um, but yeah, I'm I'm a little afraid of this. I'm not sure if they're adding like new dive coordinates after 50, so meaning 51, 52 and so on, or are they adding like completely separate dive um like just a different tab basically. Um Apparently, those coordinates will be extremely difficult to challenge and, uh, and they will challenge the, the your squads to the limit. Which I, again, I'm not... I am very afraid and not excited about it because the last time they did the, uh, the cool challenge to your squads was extremely unpleasant for players. Uh, it was just a garbage design. Uh, I'm looking at level uh, or coordinates 30s around 30s where there was a lot of stupid fucking designs where your half of your uh, more than half of your units are just permanently stunned because you're using the wrong type and the types that were allowed were very niche so i really dislike dives dives are garbage but at least they made them uh you only do them once and you're done and you don't have to worry about them. That's why I don't really care about dives anymore. But now they're introducing new stages and the negativity and, 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 and fear of them comes back again because the dive system is just not it's just not great. It's not fun. Uh, not many people. Uh, there are some people that like it, but most people don't really don't really enjoy the dive stuff, so we'll see what they do. I I'm just like, I think it will be bad, the way I see it. Um, and also speaking of the coordinates for these, they, they are nerfing the uh, ESPR corrupted objects in them, so good, good for new players. Now for the gameplay stuff, uh, they are converting the enhancement modules into supply, I'm not sure if they're if that means they're taking away the uh, enhancement module stuff from um, from like the daily stuff or not um, because now we have the uh, what it's called we have the Anastasia supply maintenance right so every second day I, I believe uh, with the current schedule we can uh, farm the enhancement modules there but now they are moving them into uh, supply which to me that's good that's good that we'll have a supply for them I just wonder if they're removing the 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 Anastasius stuff or are they adding the enhancement module like additional stage for enhancement modules in the supply if that's the case then great because um, usually, if I had to guess, it will be limited free uh, entries per day, and they will give qu quite a decent amount of them, so, and on daily basis, you'll be able to farm them, so, like, for me, I think that makes sense, people, uh, at least I was complaining that we didn't get enough EXP for gear, uh, now, it's less... Of, a, of the case uh, it's still less than before but it's not as bad as it was before um, but now with those changes with the uh, change of the schedule uh, and now adding the enhanced modules to supply I think that will definitely help um, the EXP it, the only unfortunate thing is like you have to still spend stamina on them so it's not it's not free and it's like it still doesn't fix the issue of you're not getting many of them 
when you're doing the uh, farming for relic uh, relic gear. So, you know, it is what it is. Now, uh, other things, they are improving UX of the equipment system. So basically the, um, how it will look and, and how it will, uh, like recommend stuff for each unit, that kind of stuff. Uh, they're planning on, on changing those things. So cool. Um, now they are also, uh, going to lower, uh, they're saying they will alleviate the rapid, rapid increase in difficulty. So to me, it sounds like there will be nerfing, at least to some extent, the episode 7 and 8. Uh, you could kind of feel the spike a little bit in those stages. Like some of them uh, were not just like brainless auto, which there was like one or two stages, I think. And... Uh, if I'm not mistaken, they were the, the hard mode, not the regular missions. Maybe there was there was one or two regular where you actually had to maybe pay attention a little bit. Um, so, like for newer players, like not established players, uh, definitely. It would be nice to not, not like over, uh, over like power creep the, the mainstream. It's supposed, like you're supposed to be able to just do the mainstream without much issues, um, get the story, get your rewards and be done. I don't think main story should be super difficult. Like that should not be uh, the case. You should be able to just auto it and not think much. That's what I think. So the next thing, the monster tag, uh, I'll be honest. I have no idea what this uh, paragraph means. It, the way they worded it is just nonsensical to me. Um, Maybe you guys understand it, but I just cannot really wrap my head around it. Uh, my guess is they just made a tag instead of full-blown sentences because it was it was like hard to contain the the information uh, in any other way. So like I I don't I don't understand what they're even talking about here. To be honest, I don't know what monster tag they're. I don't remember seeing monster tag. And uh, so I'll just skip over. I don't care about it. Doesn't matter. Now, the last thing is the uh, to reduce the confusion and chaos by featuring new units towards the end of Danger Close season. We are currently adjusting the Danger Close opening period. With it, we are also planning to add. A feature where CEOs can practice Danger clo Close's boss without spending the try count. And they're also planning to add a feature where the Awakened units will now be able to get the team up buff, which is given during the Danger Close season. So, this to me is actually pretty cool because I think that exclusion of Awakened units in Danger Close is just dumb. Um, you you pulled on them and you put a lot of uh, resources into those units and um, they're the flashy and cool to use stuff and to have them basically excluded almost entirely from the mode is is just not great so I will definitely welcome the the change and inclusion of those units um, now. I also wonder what they will be doing in terms of the uh, new units in Danger Close. So are they going to make it so Danger Close will never be open during a new unit banner? So basically preventing um, situations where you have maybe like a one week of danger close left a new banner comes out and that unit is perfect for current danger close so people that have money will spend money on the character to get it get it to 110 get the dupes as well and then beat your score with with the wallet basically um because free to play players will not be able to pull um you know seven copies of the unit they might have the resources to at least 110 and max skill, but still. 
so that's that is interesting take um i'm all for it for sure i just wonder what exactly they will do they're saying they will adjust the opening period of danger close but i don't does it mean we'll have less time on danger close more time on danger close or will it be like moved around depending when new banners comes out we'll just have to see um exactly what they end up doing but again i think that's good because it it's a move against the uh pay to winness of the game right so to prevent those unfair situations so that's cool um and then practice mode for uh danger claws i'll be honest we have five entries now every day i don't think practice mode is needed um i'll take it it's better to have ability to do the practice mode than not have it so i'll definitely take it but um i don't think it matters that much i think instead they should add practice mode to the raids and make it so you can choose the raid difficulty level and then you can try out your team against the difficulty uh, i think that is more helpful so you can test your teams um instead of having to wait for someone to post for example 150 uh inhibitor rate for you to finally test your team if you can one shot and if it didn't you do adjustments and now no one else has 150 posted you have to wait for someone else but by the time someone else posts it it's the next day or something maybe you forgot what adjustments you needed to make or whatever it it just breaks the flow so I think they should instead try to focus on adding the uh, practice mode to the raids instead. But yeah, that is it for the April dev notes. Uh, I'm expecting more in the May. And there will be some more gameplay and, and features coming in May apparently. So um, yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. But that's it from me. And I'll see you next time. Peace.